Hello and welcome to The Authority of Love. I'm Greg Williams and we have another fabulous Family Foundation Friday. Say that three times fast. And we welcome again Mr. David Walls, the Executive Director of the Family Foundation. Now, David, thanks again for joining us again. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely, Greg. You mentioned something to me right before we went on air here that I think we need to start with, okay? And that's going to be Father's Day is coming up Sunday, and that's a big day. I know we as fathers, David, you're a father, yep. I'm a father. Uh, Happy Father's Day to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Happy Father's Day to you and to all of our listeners who yeah. are fathers. Uh, fathers and men tend to take a lot of shots in our culture. So we want to lift them up and encourage them uh, during this time. And so you, wives and children, get out there and do something to encourage your father. You know, encouragement is literally infusing courage into someone's life. And so if you would do that, imagine what that might do for your dad. So anyway, happy Father's Day. We're gonna, we may talk about that a little bit more, but we're also going to talk about um, Governor, Bash, uh, Governor Bashir's literal promoting of lawlessness against SB 150. I'll let David explain that a little bit more. Falls right in line with the federal administration and things yeah. they're doing, as well as uh, our attorney general, who is running for governor, wrote a brief on the SB 150 um, legal challenge, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, and then a little bit on Choose Life license plate. So that's just the tease. I'm going to pitch it to you, and then we'll come back to some other things in a minute, David. What, what, t- tell us about what's going on with this uh with the governor here. Yeah, Greg, you know, we, we keep circling back to uh, SB 150. As we said, we would. SB 150. But really, Greg, what, what we have seen from the moment that law was passed in the General Assembly early this year has been a concerted effort on multiple fronts to try by LGBT advocates uh, to try to um, undo the law. And, and really, we, we even saw rallies and so forth uh, at, at JCPS encouraging school districts to um, to not follow the law, mm-hmm. saying they didn't want the law to be followed. And unfortunately, that's now what we're seeing being promoted by uh, Bashir through his Kentucky Department of Education and, and Commissioner Glass. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'll just kind of catch folks up on, on what's happened. So the, um, the KDE, the Kentucky Department of Education, will a lot of times put out guidance on the laws that were passed and to provide school districts with guidance on how the laws changed as it relates to schools and education. Uh, They put guidance out right after the legislative session ended on SB 150 and specifically related to the provisions of the law and it was at least on the section of the law that we're going to be talking about here, Greg, was just a straightforward reading. And this was the portion of the law that dealt with protecting kids from LGBT indoctrination Mm -hmm. and saying we don't want um, human sexuality shouldn't be taught at all in K through five. And then uh, sexual orientation, gender identity, and kind of what I would say, uh, teaching kids LGBT uh, propaganda, the idea that you can identify opposite of your biological sex, those kinds of topics can't be taught or uh, promoted at all. That's the plain language of the law. Well, what has happened now? The, the KDE has put out a new updated guidance where they are uh, essentially focusing on one um, uh, or that's in the, in the law and they are completely misconstruing the law to say that instead of a, a clear reading, clear, clear reading, the clear intention, the debate, everything surrounded was it, was that there was two provisions you had to do this, both, both provisions. And so now what they're saying is, it's actually what the legislature did was actually give schools a choice about what part of the law they want to follow. And if you follow this guidance, it's so absurd because if a school district was to choose part one of the law and then quote unquote be allowed to engage in the activity that's co- prohibited in part two, you would actually probably be violating the other part of the law. It makes the law completely right. unreadable. Boy, yeah. uh, and so this is a clear effort to try to undercut the law and really what the KDE is doing through the the Bashir administration who's um, uh, certainly he's already been uh, publicly spoken that he's in favor of what uh, his Kentucky Department of Education is doing is they are giving guidance to every Kentucky school to not follow the law. David, I I saw that on your old page. You put that out recent days on the Facebook page I think and probably others I saw it there. And the interesting thing is that um, the the immediate thing that came to my mind, and I wrote about it, is uh, two things. And I want to let you talk about the second one. But the first one was um, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 12, that in the end times there would be, uh, because of the lawlessness, the love of many would grow cold. 
And that in and of itself tells us where we're headed. But there's also this idea of checks and balances in our government system. Speak to that a little bit because he's clearly overstepping his bounds. Right. Lay that out for our listeners. No, I mean, look, the, the, the way it's supposed to work is the legislature passes the laws. Makes the laws, right. And the executive branch enforces them. Right. Uh, or executes yeah, them. Executes, That's we executive yeah, executive yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Executes yes. them and, and uh, ensures that they're enforced. Now, what, what, the, uh, you know, what the KDE will, will say uh, most likely is, well, this is just guidance. Uh, but we heard this, you know, when Greg, you and I talked about this leading in the last session, when they put out guidance before the last school year saying that you had to go along, uh, along with the pronoun uh, guidance nonsense right. and, 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 right. and, you know, uh, usurp parental rights as it relates to what's going on to their Which is part of school. SB 150 as well. Right. right? So yeah. let, let's be clear. They are trying to subvert the law. Yeah. And uh, there's been a number of um, uh, some, several of the bill authors that were involved in different pieces of the bill, Senator Wise, uh, uh, Representative Shane Baker, Representative Josh Callaway, have all come out very strongly. And just this week... Um, very thankful that the uh, Senate President and the House Speaker jointly together came out and put a put a statement out, essentially condemning what the the KDE is doing and the Bashir administration is doing, and and reminding schools that they need to follow they yep. need to follow the law. Yep. And so um, we actually, Greg, you know, this is one of the things that we'll do. We we like to make it uh, provide easy ways for 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 Christians and, and followers of our organization to be able to engage. We have an action alert up on our website right mm-hmm. now. If you go to KentuckyFamily.org and go to our Take Action page, you can send a message with a click of a button to, uh, to the governor, to the commissioner, uh, Jason Glass, and to the voting members of the Board of Education to encourage them that they need to follow the law. Yeah. Look, this is going to be really important heading into the to next school year, uh, that there's not mass confusion uh, amongst school districts on some very important provisions that are simply just designed to protect our kids from inappropriate material that has no place in the classroom. And, and here, let's let's connect the dots yeah. here because the executive branch underneath that administration comes all of these different arenas, these different areas such as education, in this case departments right. I should say, that's what yeah. they're often called, Department of Education. So they are acting in line with the governor and the governor in line with them to basically, as you said, subvert the law. Right. And that was my point in saying we're in we're in a we're in a, a, a state of lawlessness. I don't mean that by Kentucky. Yeah. I mean that by yeah. our general culture right. is in a state of lawlessness. And we as Christians need to take that to heart. Yeah. We need to stand up against that graciously, but we need to stand up against yeah. that. Now, how does that echo or fall in line with what we're hearing from D.C.? David. Well, I mean, you know, Greg, as you and I have talked a little bit about, but, you know, a lot of this really uh, picked up steam during the uh, President Obama's administration. Yes, yes. And now, you know, with uh, Vice President Biden at the time, now President Biden, really using uh, executive um, actions yeah. uh, to rewrite laws. Yeah. You and I talked a couple weeks ago about this uh, ongoing effort to try to rewrite Title IX mm-hmm. to undo um, uh, laws like here in Kentucky, the Save Women's Sports Laws, and so yes. many others that have passed common sense laws to protect female athletics in light of this, um, uh, what's going on where we're seeing biological males being allowed to compete in female sports. And so the, the Biden administration has uh, proposed a rule that would essentially rewrite a federal law. And we've seen this, unfortunately, time and time again at the federal level. And this is, uh, you know, uh, essentially what we're seeing here. The governor didn't like, and, and his yeah. Department of Education yeah. doesn't like the common sense provisions that are part of this law. They weren't able to, um, you know, if, if they don't like them, then make the case to change the law. Don't try to use the government yeah. bureaucracy yeah. to subvert uh, the law by, by saying that something is, um, not, what know, is. not what it That's is. That's exactly Absolutely. right. And yeah. interesting, last week, David, we talked about uh, his support of and doubling down on the sister's uh, for in perpetual indulgence, yeah. which mock faith, which would would pursue and groom children. Uh, that's what much yeah. of this is. And now when the law says that, he's coming back and standing against that. Yeah. So as I, as I said in another post that I, that I mentioned, uh, we need to be careful uh, come November. I'm not telling you, I'm just saying, you're not. it's not just who you're voting for, it's what you're voting for. Right. 
because we need to be careful of that. I, I want to uh, switch gears here just a, a moment because we've talked about this. Uh, I'll say this one more thing. Elections uh, do have consequences. Dollars have consequences, and elections have consequences, yeah. right? Now, if you want to hear any more of these, you can go to wjmm.com, uh, click on the podcast tab, Love and Lordship links, and you'll find today in the previous two days, you can go to loveandlordship.com and find many more podcast videos and articles. Uh, David's already told you, KentuckyFamily.org, and take action. Please pray about doing that. And send a message ready for them, right, David? Oh, yeah. There's a message ready. Read it, check it out, and then send that in. Let's stand strong on this. But you wanted to close with um, a couple of things. Uh, General, uh, attorney, yeah, Cameron yeah. Has so let, has let we, brief. We've, we've talked about, you know, uh, unfortunate lawlessness on the executive branch side. You know, Greg, you and I have talked a lot about, too, about, you know, uh, sometimes lawlessness from the judicial branch. Yes. Uh, and um, this case hasn't been completely played out yet, but you and I talked about the ACLU filed a lawsuit right. against one of the other provisions of SB 150 that uh, uh, deals with protecting kids from these harmful, harmful gender transitions. And uh, just last week, our uh, Attorney General Daniel Cameron and his team filed a very strong brief in response to the ACLU's arguments. Uh, really doing a, a very strong job of, of making it crystal clear that it's uh, completely constitutional in alignment uh, to, I mean, the idea that protecting kids from irreparable harm is completely defensible and in line with yes. uh, what the law should be doing, protecting uh, protecting children yeah. in this context. And so we're we're thankful to have a Attorney General's office and, and, and Daniel Cameron and his team doing such a strong job fighting for these duly enacted laws as they get challenged in court and unfortunately now sometimes trying to get um, uh, rewrote essentially in uh, by executive action. Yeah. So all this kind of ties together uh, with why it's so important uh, for us to really understand the, the proper roles of government. I want to give you a few seconds, but I want yeah. to remind you again, I said it earlier, there we have uh, General Attorney, uh, Attorney General, I said that before, yeah. I flipped that yeah. around, but Attorney General Daniel Cameron, remember it's not only who you vote for, but what you vote for. Look what they're doing. Right. Look at what they're promoting and how it will affect us as Kentuckians. So thanks. Choose Life License Plate. Give a plug for that. Nick. Yeah. Nick, you know, yeah. We, as Greg, you and I have talked, uh, we're um, reminding folks that June is now Celebrate Life Month as yes. we approach the, the uh, one-year anniversary of Roe v. Wade being overturned. And, you know, we just like to remind folks from time to time that you can sign up for a Choose Life License Plate here in the state of Kentucky. And $35. When you do that, when you do that um, yeah. it, uh, it's, a, it's 10 extra dollars compared right. to a regular license plate, right. but those funds are passed on to the pregnancy care centers. There's about 50 uh, centers across Kentucky that do phenomenal life-saving work. So we're just reminding folks what a, what a good time in the month of June to, to consider uh, having a license plate that gets the pro-life message out there and also supports uh, the Choose Life plate. So we have a, if you, again, if you go to our website at KentuckyFamily.org, we have a Choose Life page where you can find out more information yeah. about that and kind of the history of it. Yeah. Thank you, David. Uh, and be sure and do that if you if you feel led to. Also, on our pages, there's give tabs. If the Lord's leading you to partner with us in that way, we appreciate it. And if not, keep praying and figure out where he wants you to and then be obedient there. Thanks for joining us. Thanks always for your prayers and thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day and God bless in Christ. Now, stay tuned for my good friend Bill Reeser and Encounter coming right up after this show. And then at 12.45, another good friend, Greg Horn, is going to present Hope is Here, which you, both of those, you really need to take some time to listen to those. They're excellent, really good stuff. Thanks again, David, for good being with us. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.